Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Adjust your belief. To believe is to accept that something is true, that something can happen. This teenage kid from a very poor family wanted to go to college real badly, but his parents could not even afford a day of college. However, one day, a teacher told him about a scholarship that gave everything. At first, he was reluctant because he figured that others would get the scholarship, not him. But one morning, he woke up and he said to himself, if there is such a scholarship, however many persons apply, I believe that I will be successful. It happened. That kid got a scholarship that covers tuition, accommodation, gave him a monthly allowance and guaranteed him a summer job for every year that he was in school. To believe is to accept that something is true, to have a conviction or an assurance that this can and will happen. There's a Bible story that is about believing, the story of Lazarus. Well, actually, it is about Lazarus, but the story is really about his sisters, Mary and Martha. For some people, believing is not just a one-shot thing. Rather, it is believing for as long as it takes for a positive and desired outcome to occur. So this story is about the sisters and their precious brother is the issue at stake. Lazarus got really sick and his sisters sent an email to Jesus with a simple message. Lord, the one you love is sick. The only clue that Jesus knew who they were talking about was who the email message came from. It came from Mary and Martha. They believed with all their hearts that Jesus is a healer, and so he would come to their house right away and heal their sick brother. Sounds good so far, right? Jesus did not come, at least not right away. In fact, Jesus arrived in their town four days after Lazarus' funeral. Mary and Martha and the whole town were in mourning, and the last thing they expected was for Jesus to show up. Sometimes, belief is based on our knowledge and our understanding of a situation. They genuinely believed not only that Jesus can heal, but they believed that when he received their urgent message, he would rush to their home or he would do something from where he is and make Lazarus get well. That's all they were concerned about. Sometimes we believe in God, but we put boundaries on what he, we believe he can do. So Martha went out to meet Jesus, not to give him a hug and thank him for coming. She went out to let him know that you made me believe in vain. You let me down. We really believe that you would have come and healed him, but now there is no possibility that you can heal him. He's dead. Jesus engaged her in a conversation about believing. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? What is he talking about? You see, Mary and Martha, they believed that Jesus could do what they expected, come and heal their sick brother, except he didn't. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. He heard that from each of them. But now he is here challenging Martha to not just believe in what he can do, but believe in him. Don't limit my power to only what you can see or think, but believe in me because I am. I am greater than your limited opinion of me. I can do what you expect and so much more because I am. You wanted Jesus to heal, to come and heal your brother. But the Jesus who is here today, four days after your brother is buried, is more than you can ask or imagine. 
you put me in a box and all around is the label, Jesus can do this and this and heal my sick brother. Even the mourners around were part of this limited belief of Jesus. Jesus is asking her to remove that label because that label speaks of limitation and Jesus will not be limited to only what we believe. I am asking you, Martha, to revise, adjust, expand your belief in me because I am able to do immeasurably more than all you could ask or imagine according to the power in me. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Believe in me, the one for whom all things are possible. Matthew 19 verse 26. So Jesus did what he does best. Jesus exercises power that is far greater than we know. Listen to Jesus' prayer as he stood outside Lazarus' tomb. This is the Jesus who raised Jairus' daughter, but that was the same day she died, okay? This is the Jesus who raised the woman's son while they were on their way to bury him. But in this case, it is different. This case is impossible. So this is what Jesus said to his father. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I thank you. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of Mary and Martha and all who are here, that they may believe that you sent me. John 11, 41, 42. What happened next had never happened before. Impossible. Jesus called the man who had died and was buried four days before. Jesus called him to do. Jesus spoke to the dead. He did not go in the grave and touch him. He did not toss a bucket of water into the grave. Jesus stood outside and commanded a dead man to walk out of the grave. My friends, that is impossible. It happened. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. I know you're still with me. There is something that you want Jesus to do. Please know that he can do what you believe is possible, but Jesus can do what is impossible. And all he is asking of you today is to believe that he specializes in what is impossible. Jesus is like that. And today he is asking you to believe not only in what you think he can do, but believe in him who can do exceeding abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. Believe in Jesus who does the impossible.